There's a lot of information right now that suggests Apex Legends might be dying. Today marks the lowest point in Steam Player since 21st of July, and on Twitch, viewership hasn't been this low for Apex Legends since October 2020, two entire years ago. Similarly, interest for Apex on Google has now reached a low point that we last saw in October 2020 as well, and apparently 77% of current Apex players are saying the game is boring, which really lends into the idea that Apex Legends is on a big downward trend. So why is this happening? What has happened to Apex to see such a drop in players, and should we be worried about the future of the game? The biggest issue that crops up after reading through the comments is an issue I've been talking about for a long time. It's not about the lack of content, and it's not about how the game feels to play, but instead it's simply just the matchmaking. This can be a strange thing to get your head around, but these days matchmaking systems are incredibly complex and take all sorts of data to determine who you should fight in your lobby and who should be on your team. The trouble with matchmaking in almost every modern day game is that it's not just about trying to provide the most fair experience for every player. The main goal is to keep players engaged as much as humanly possible, and one of the biggest data points developers use is that players actually stay more engaged if they lose games frequently, because if they win too often, or lose too often, they'll be more likely to quit. I've made an entire video going very into detail about this that covers all the sources and data about this, but I just want to be quick here before moving through the rest of the video. The matchmaking system is designed to keep you engaged as much as possible possible, but it can only determine that by how long you are spending on the game each session. It doesn't know how frustrated we may feel having to have super sweaty fights against high skill players, it doesn't know if we've thrown a controller at the wall because our random teammates are level 12s and our enemies are pred 3 stacks, it doesn't know how we're feeling. All it knows is if you click again to play another match or quit to the menu. It just simply tries to ensure we are playing for as long as possible. And honestly, it isn't some evil system. It's what every modern day developer does, because as a live service game business, they need to make sure their players keep coming back, because it's the biggest risk, players leaving more so than staying. That is the start of a dead game. Ask Overwatch 2 players if they're having the same experience right now, and actually, you'll see there's a lot of frustration there too. And yeah, whilst matchmaking is not evil, it's definitely not a compassionate system, and I think that's where a lot of the issues come from. Another big issue is cheating, both on console and PC. The number of Zim and Strike Pack users is definitely increasing, with big retailers like Walmart and GameStop literally selling them off the shelves. If you didn't know, Zim and Strike Packs are controller mods that give you an unfair hardware advantage by controlling the recall or sticking onto targets for you. They have a ton of settings and special features, and most games don't even detect or ban them. If you didn't realize how big of a problem this is, take a look at the number of reviews for the Strike Pack on Amazon. 23,000 reviews on just one product listing. By comparison, the standard Xbox One controller on Amazon has 88,000 reviews, but that includes all variants and colors, and obviously you'd expect more people to buy an extra controller than a Strike Pack, right? But the difference is scarily not that much. So yeah, the cheating problem is getting ridiculous. Cheating on PC is even worse. With many pros and content creators complaining about it this season, the chance you've seen your favorite Apex content creator get killed by a cheater is pretty high, but the worst part is these clips are usually clips of blatant aimbotters, which do get banned fairly quickly and take up a small proportion of the entire cheating community. Most cheaters rarely use blatant aimbots because they don't want to be banned, but instead they'll use cheats just to see through walls, and because most Apex cheats can tell if you are spectating them, they won't do anything suspicious whilst you're watching them. With games like Valorant and Warzone literally building their own anti-cheat from the ground up, it's obvious that even the developers know that it's a very, very big problem. The core gameplay of Apex Legends has always been its shining light. You really cannot find a modern shooter with such fluid movement and gunplay, but even that hasn't been able to keep a lot of players from quitting, and I do think matchmaking and cheating are the main 
causes. Even if the core gameplay is fun and rewarding, if the environment in which you are playing is just filled with frustration because of matchmaking and cheating issues, then you're just not going to be having fun. So with all this said, is this the beginning of the end for Apex Legends? Are we going to see Apex Legends diminish into obscurity? Well, thankfully, the matchmaking system is actually always being worked on at Respawn, and sometimes they push out changes that do make things too sweaty, and it can take them some time to adjust. Just that. I've always noticed changes, especially around updates and LTM releases, and I notice as the player size changes, it becomes sweatier and more difficult for the matchmaker to actually find good games for me. It's actually very challenging to have a pool of 60 players all sort of being within the same lobby. Like if it's a team versus team situation, it's a lot easier. But in Apex's case, it's really hard to balance. So when suddenly they have different LTMs added each week, it's a new problem for them to solve. And that may be the cause of some of their difficulties. But with the new season dropping very soon, I'm hopeful that there'll be an influx of returning players, and that may come with an adjustment to the matchmaking system to make things a little less sweaty. And with cheating, the good news is that EA is working on their own kernel level anti-cheat, and we can only hope that it offers as good of a protection as Valorant's Vanguard. Unlike a lot of opinions you see online, the developers do actually care about the game, and do actually want the game to continue to be successful, and they do know what they're doing. There are devs out there that are super passionate about making Apex the best it can be, and even if you don't believe that, there's no doubt that EA does want Apex to continue to be successful for, well, basically forever. Because it's a business, it's a successful business, and they obviously want to make the right choices to keep it going. Doing the opposite of that would just be completely ridiculous. So these problems of matchmaking and cheating realistically are only just teething problems for the game. And there's no doubt that they will be ironed out over time. It might take quite a while for these issues to no longer be such a problem, and I do think that the current industry standard of matchmaking being focused more towards engagement rather than skill will always be just a downside to the world of live service games that we can never truly get away from. But the grass isn't always greener. I think it's safe to say a lot of viewership and players moved over to Overwatch 2, but that game does have a lot of similar matchmaking problems too, especially in rank. Ultimately though, Apex Legends isn't going anywhere, and I think that it's better to zoom out. Instead of focusing on how things are now, compare them to how they were at the beginning. Apex doesn't have the crazy content output like Fortnite does, but over time they surely and steadily improve the game and fix the issues that everyone has been complaining about. And that's the great thing about most live service games. If we do share our opinions online about the game, they do get heard and the developers do keep them in mind. I think the biggest issue that a lot of players have is they don't understand how difficult and time-consuming development can be, especially in the case of Apex Legends, which is running on a very modified version of the Source engine. It is not as smooth and easy to develop on as, say, Unreal Engine, which is what Fortnite uses. And I think that's one of the core issues as well. Apex could potentially think about creating a brand new engine from start so that they have an easier experience making content. Adding features like cross-progression may be a lot easier. Cross-progression, by the way, has been under development for a long time, but the reason why it hasn't been released yet is because it's incredibly difficult to do on the engine that they're using. But here's the question I want to leave you with. If they were to create a brand new engine which would allow them to have more content released more frequently, get out features like cross-progression quicker, but the downside is you don't have a a lot of the physics and special things that make Apex unique. They may not be able to replicate the way the game feels by moving it to a new engine, and movement things like tap strafing, zipline jumping, and super gliding could all be just thrown out of the window because they are relics of an old source engine. So what would you prefer? Fluid movement and a game that chugs on slowly over time, adding features that we've been asking for for a long time, surely but slowly, or a game that just doesn't quite feel like Apex but can release content at a faster pace. Let me know and I'll see you in the comments. Cheerio!